This is the land of Havilah, 1 Samuel 31. This chapter takes us back to the battlefield in the north where the Philistines and Israelites were gathering to fight in the valley of Jezreel. Saul already knows that he and his sons are going to die. Verse 1, Now the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell down slain on Mount Gilboa. The Philistines overtook Saul and his sons, and the Philistines killed Jonathan, Abinadab, and Malchishua, the sons of Saul. Comment. Saul had at least six sons. Three of them died with him on the battlefield, including David's friend Jonathan. It's a mystery to us why Yahweh would allow Jonathan to die a violent death. He's been nothing but a hero in Israel. He's been a great encouragement to David, and at the same time, he's been faithful to his father. His father abused him, even threw a spear at him, 1 Samuel 20, 33. But Jonathan stayed faithful. His dream of being next to David in the kingdom will not come to pass, but he's going to get something better. Like you and me, he's going to be next to a greater person in the coming kingdom of God, next to the Christ that David represents. So, if we could put it in very elementary terms, Jonathan's death is an example of a bad thing happening to a good person. If we live long enough, we're certainly going to see a lot of seemingly bad things happening to good people, even to children, and we certainly don't judge a person according to any calamity that might overcome them. And as far as Yahweh's, uh, Yahweh's justification for Jonathan's death, it's above our pay grade, but we trust Yahweh will award Jonathan very handsomely in the final equation. And it's plain and clear in the scripture, he'll do just that. Deuteronomy 31, 6, quote, he will not fail you or forsake you. Jesus promised that if anybody is persecuted for his sake, then great will be that person's reward in heaven. So we have God's promise that Jonathan's going to come out very well rewarded in the end. Now coming up some details about how the battle closed in on Saul. Verse 3, The battle went hard against Saul and the archers overtook him and he was greatly distressed by reason of the archers. Comment, the archers overtook Saul, which has also been translated, they spotted Saul. There's a hail of arrows coming in his direction. Verse 4, Then Saul said to his armor bearer, Draw your sword and thrust me through with it, lest these uncircumcised come and thrust me through and abuse me. Comment, when the Philistines captured Samson, they put out his eyes, put him in brass shackles, put him in prison, made him grind a mill, and brought him out for entertainment, Judges chapter 16. Saul would rather die than be tortured and abused. He wants his armor bearer to kill him. Still in verse 4. But his armor bearer would not, for he was terrified. Therefore Saul took his sword and fell on it. When his armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he likewise fell on his sword and died with him. So Saul died and his three sons and his armor bearer and all his men that same day together. Comment. Saul fell on his sword, but as we'll find out in the next chapter, if we can believe the Amalekite messenger who says he witnessed it, Saul didn't die instantly. He lingered and called for the Amalekite to come over and finish him off. Verse 7, When the men of Israel who were on the other side of the valley and those who were beyond the Jordan saw that the men of Israel fled and that Saul and his sons were dead, they abandoned their cities and fled and the Philistines came and lived in them. Comment, The Israelites in nearby towns were obviously waiting anxiously for the news when they heard about it, they abandoned their cities and ran. Philistines came in and lived in those places, even as far as the other side of the Jordan River. We know David will be king. With the country so thoroughly invaded by Philistines, it's obvious he's going to need Yahweh's support. Now on the day after battle, verse 8, On the next day when the Philistines came to strip the slain, they found Saul and his three sons fallen on Mount Gilboa. They cut off his head, stripped off his armor, and sent into the land of the Philistines all around to carry the news to the house of their idols and to the people. They put his armor in the house of the Ashtaroth, and they fastened his body to the wall of Bethshan. Comment. The Philistines put Saul's armor in the house of Ashtaroth, which is a temple of idols. So the Philistines are crediting their idols for the victory. It doesn't say where this particular temple was located, but it might have been in the newly conquered former Israelite territory in a temple the Israelites actually built themselves, 1 Samuel 7, 3. They fastened Saul's body on a wall in Beth Shan, which was a city of Israel in the Jezreel Valley near the Jordan River. 
So obviously Beth Shan was one of those cities the Philistines began to occupy. 2 Samuel 21.12 provides more detail. They put Saul's body on a wall in an open square or plaza so it was on public display. And coming up, they did the same to Saul's son's bodies. But next, there's a little bright spot in the chapter. Jabesh Gilead is an Israelite city on the other side of the Jordan. It's the place where the king of the Ammonites was going to put out every man's right eye and subject them to servitude. And this was Saul's first great victory. He rallied uh, 330,000 troops. They marched all night to the Ammonite camp and struck the Ammonites and chased them until there were no two of them left together, 1 Samuel 11. It was that victory that rallied all Israel around Saul. To the men of Jabesh, the help came out of nowhere, and they're forever grateful to Saul, verse 11. When the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead heard what the Philistines had done to Saul, all the valiant men arose, went all night, and took the body of Saul and the bodies of his sons from the wall of Bethshan, and they came to Jabesh and burned them there. Comment. They traveled from Jabesh Gilead all night, crossed the Jordan, and came to Beth Shan, which is now a Philistine town, took down the four bodies, brought them to their own city, and burned them, apparently to prevent any more abuse. Verse 13. They took their bones and buried them under the tamarisk tree in Jabesh and fasted seven days. Comment. So that was a touching ending and memorial by the men of Jabesh. They didn't forget Saul. That was the last verse of the book of 1 Samuel. 2 Samuel starts exactly at this point and takes David until his old age. Check any available titles at landofhavilah.net. This is the map of 1 Samuel 31. This is the Jezreel Valley between what would later be called Galilee to the north and Samaria to the south. The army of Israel camped at the spring at the town of Jezreel, 1 Samuel 29.1, at the foot of Mount Gilboa. The Philistines went up to Jezreel and made the attack, 1 Samuel 29.11. The Israelites fled up the mountain, probably so that the Philistine chariots would have less advantage. Israel's army fell slain on the mountain, including Saul and his sons. The Jordan River's here. Israelites fled out of the cities of the Jezreel Valley, and the Philistines occupied those cities, including Beth Shan, which was near the Jordan River. The Philistines even, even began living in the cities as far as the other side of the Jordan River. They displayed Saul and his son's bodies in Beth Shan, but men from Jabesh Gilead, which was somewhere on the other side of the Jordan, came to Beth Shan in the night and took the bodies back to Jabesh.